David Olga was surprised that you were busy cooking and everything. I was telling her you are quite the uh, Renaissance man in all of your fitness and taking care of yourself and your career and all that sort of stuff. What's it? Uh, where did this come from? What? Are, what? Yeah. Where, where, why'd you develop this interest in food and interest in working out and all this sort of stuff? What's? I guess I just like life. You know, so, like to be happy, like to experience things. So, what does the experience of pleasure stretch mean to you so far? Well, for me, it's primarily uh, recovering some of the mobility. I found that after two car wrecks, my mobility in my left shoulder had greatly diminished. Uh, basically, a chiropractor had told me that I was having referral pain that was from a pinched nerve, so I avoided anything that made that pain, and then eventually, it wasn't referral pain anymore, it was just my shoulder was atrophied. So after I realized what had happened, uh, I got a really good massage in Tokyo, and it loosened it up, mm. and I realized what was going on. I had some jackets fitted, and the tailor had to take a half inch out of my left side because the, shoulder, make, was so the shoulder was so small. So I started working on it about a year and a half ago. And when I went to your flow yoga, yeah, uh, basically that was the precursor to pressure, pleasure stretch, I guess. Yeah. I found that after just one visit, I was so much better. And, I didn't get to come as often as I liked. Maybe a month later I went again, or I went like three visits right, in right. about a month and a half. And um, so I always planned to come back. I kind of lost track of you when we went to Hawaii. but uh, We were saying that the, the, studio the flight and the other sorts of things happened, and, and like flying was different and driving over the hill was different and that kind of oh, stuff. Oh yeah, after the, I also have sacroiliac problems. Two car wrecks and football kind of did a number on me. So uh, I used to have to take a break in. Uh, I used to have to take a break in Los Gatos just to drive from my house to Mountain View and stretch. Now I can drive to. I can drive to Mountain View and back no problem. Yeah. And and riding in an airplane? Oh, no problem with the airplane, particularly with the uh, looser upper body. I can even just lay my chest on my knees and just rest with my neck being stretched out. It's amazing. So what's the psychology for you? What was the use of your neck? Do you, you use your neck so strongly in everything you do? What was that about? Was that being so smart? Well, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Actually, I think it was when I played football, uh, things that are illegal now were not only legal, they were expected. So I was, well, no, I was a running back. I, I put big headbutts on people. Oh, okay. And as they got bigger and I didn't, it was kind of like running into a telephone pole. <laughs> Then once you hit hit them once, they they knew the, what you could pack, so yeah. they would approach you differently, you know, a little more. And then if you could, it's kind of like the lob versus the kill in tennis. Mm -hmm. So if you, and I kind of preferred to go heavy on the headbutt. So right. when I tried to dance around somebody, they'd be set for a big hit, and I get around them. Okay. So I ended up overusing it. Mm -hmm. I even uh, in middle school I cracked a couple of my helmets. They got me a better helmet, and then one game I cracked a couple of the other team's helmets, and the, the uh, ref told me to just turn it down, you know. Turn it, turn it down. Don't, play, play, don't not, play her football so hard. I'm not breaking the rules, am I? This is what my coach tells me to do. They loved it when you hit real hard. Yeah, crack the crack the helmet. Crack. Yeah. Now it's all illegal, right? Right. And so. it's the most dangerous thing you can do. If you actually go in and duck your head to hit hard, that's when they have a chance. No, I don't duck. I, if it's back... So you, you, would, you, would hit, you would hit it like face. this, yeah. So it got to the point where I'd put a hit on somebody and my hands would go numb. Yes. And I told my coach, my hands are kind of numb. So I'll we'll sit on the bench for a minute. You, you know, know, they would shake them out. Yeah, yeah, sit on the bench a minute. So I did a number on it. Then I got two car wrecks when the kids were little. Two in the same year. Drunk drivers, both of them, wow. just ran into me. So bad luck. And that stirred up some stuff. I missed about two months of work. So I've been dealing with some serious uh, pinched nerves in my cervical region. Well, my, my old football injuries are all healed now from yeah. this practice, mm -hmm. and so I'm looking forward to you saying being well, able to I'm so thing. I'm so far along, it's just crazy. I can touch my biceps to my ears, you know, stuff like this. Yeah, which wasn't possible no. for a while. The first time I came to your yoga class last spring, right. I couldn't even lay on the floor with my hands outstretched. Right. There was too much of a stretch across here to even lay that way. And now again, so I'm sticking with it. Where do you go, buddy? Thanks.